Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa. I'm an applications engineer here at Go Engineer, and today I'm here to present a quick tip on saving assemblies as an STL file for 3D printing. Now a common technique when this is applied is when you create print in place assemblies, where you take advantage of the natural clearances between parts in your assembly, as well as the presence of support material in the 3D printing process to create fully functioning mechanisms, fully assembled and without the need for additional hardware in a single print job. But oftentimes, in order to do this, you need to have a multi-body STL file, or an STL file with multiple closed meshes inside of it, which, which represent the individual components of your assembly. So today I'm going to th show you three methods on how to do this effectively. Let's start things off with method number one, saving your assembly as a multi-body part. Now this is a universal joint, which is from the SOLIDWORKS training file set used in all the essentials classes, and I thought it was a good example to demonstrate the kind of process we're looking at. All we have to do to kick this off is to go up here, save as, and rather than save as a new assembly, we're going to save it as a new SOLIDWORKS part file. And what this does is that rather than um, saving as an STL directly, we're able to create a multi-body part from this method, and from that multi-body part, we're going to save it as an STL. And I've seen a lot of users do this because it's a very brute force method of converting each of your individual components and components within sub-assemblies into imported body geometry like you see right here. And because SOLIDWORKS already recognizes this as separate solid bodies, it becomes really easy to export this as an STL, like so. And when we open this STL file in SOLIDWORKS, we notice that it has 10 graphics bodies in it. And by clicking on them, we can inspect and see that indeed each of these graphics bodies represents a single component from our original assembly. And through this, we've accomplished our goal of creating a multi-body STL file. But there are easier ways to do this. This is, again, the brute force method. So let's take a look at the others. Method number two, saving your assembly as an STL file directly from the assembly itself. I prefer this method because it prevents me from having to create a separate SOLIDWORKS file every single time I want to export a new version or iteration of my design and all we have to do is follow a similar process. We go right up here, we hit save as, and we make sure to select the save type as an STL. But when we do this, SOLIDWORKS actually creates 10 separate STL files, one for each part in my assembly. And while I can use my slicer to fuse all these parts together since they maintain the correct relative positioning to each other, that's not always efficient, nor is it particularly sustainable when I have oodles and oodles of separate STL files. So how do we get this to export just one STL file? We're actually going to follow the same method, but use a different option. So what we need to do is we need to go to save as again, but this time when we select an STL as the save type, we're not just going to hit save. We're going to go over to our system options right here. And this opens the system options for export for the STL file format. And we want to make sure this box is checked. Save all components of an assembly in a single file. And this will do exactly as it says. It will create a single multi-body STL file for us. As we can see, it's not even giving us the warning that we created 10 files. And when we open that particular file, we can see 
that like the first one, we have 10 separate graphics bodies, one for each component within our original assembly. And this is by far my favorite method. And up next, I'm going to show you a different way to do this for subassemblies. Method number three, saving subassemblies. So what if we're in the situation where we've already completed our design and the assembly is fully defined? How do we export just a small section of it that isn't already a subassembly like we see right here? Well, if we just selected them from the feature tree and tried the same trick of saving as an STL file, we can see that this doesn't exactly work because it tries to convert all of our assembly into an STL file. So we need to try something a little fancier. What we're going to do is go into our assembly, go under insert components and hit new assembly right here. And this creates a virtual assembly within our top level um, design. And all we need to do is click all the parts we want, drag and drop them into this new virtual subassembly. And this is a good method because it actually maintains all of the mates between each of these components and all the components outside of this new subassembly. And it still functions exactly as the same as it would normally. And now all we have to do is right click on the new subassembly name, hit open subassembly like we would any other file. And this, even though the assembly itself is virtual, allows us to open that subassembly in a new window. And from here, we can go to the normal method as before, hit Save As, and you will get this little pop-up, which basically asks you whether or not you want to continue working in a virtual subassembly, or if you want to save this out as a normal component. But let's just hit OK and ignore that. And we're going to save the type as STL. And when we save it, we see from our little preview that it is exactly just the few parts that we wanted. And this is my third method of saving assemblies as STL files. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tip on saving assemblies in SOLIDWORKS as STL files. My name is Miguel Davilia, I'm with GoEngineer, and I look forward to seeing you all next time.